it's true. I mean, there's a lot to be said about the negative manifestations of yoga and has appeared in the West. I mean, we have beer yoga, wine yoga, goat oh, yoga. Yeah. And, and I, you know, I spend a lot of time traveling to India, you know, with, with my yoga research colleagues there. And when I run into Indians, I mean, they are aghast. They are like, oh, you Americans, you're taking our sacred yoga lineage and you're turning it into this, you know, total absolute, you know, wasted Party. version of, of yoga. What are you people doing? You're destroying yoga. Hmm. And, and, you know, I understand and I appreciate that. But, you know, however, there's another side to that argument. And, and I actually made this argument with an editorial I wrote to the International Journal of Yoga Therapy some 10 years ago. And the idea was here that, yes, it's true. There is a lot of yoga that is very trivial, that is just physically oriented. But there's something about these physical postures and exercises, even though that's all they're doing, that engenders a change. And that change is a mind-body change that generates this deeper experience, this deeper sense of relaxation, this sense of connectedness. And suddenly people are starting to question the yoga they're doing. They're saying, geez, you know, this deeper experience is more than the reason I started, which was to fix my knee or to fix my shoulder or to reduce my stress. But now I want this deeper stuff, and this limited yoga doesn't seem to be getting me much further. So I'm going across the street, yeah. that yoga lineage style of yoga, where they're talking about spirituality and get deeper into that. Yeah. And so in that sense, these trivial forms of yoga can actually serve as a gateway to the more traditional lineages where you get this deeper experience and the, and the discussion of the philosophy and the experience.